All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. My name is Terry White, worldwide design and photography evangelist for Adobe. And it's my pleasure to be streaming here live today on this beautiful Friday afternoon, at least for me. Uh, so with that said, uh, welcome. We're going to be um, taking a look at how to um, uh, basically take images that you've taken, maybe photographs or images you've created, and compositing them onto backgrounds that we get from stock. Now, of course, the backgrounds don't have to be from stock, but I think stock or Adobe Stock gives you a good way of finding the perfect background for the scene you're trying to create. So I see some folks in the chat already. Hello, uh, Trick Karma, Victoria, Jim, Daniel, Nate. Yo, what's up? All right, so with that said, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time in the waiting area of the uh, stream. We're going to go ahead and just dive right in. For those of you who get here late, you can always watch the replay. And for those of you watching the replay, uh, as always, thanks for watching the replay. All right, so let me uh, switch over to my computer. And also, I need to bring up a chat window so I can see what you guys are saying over there. Okay, cool. I can see the chat now. And, um, and hello, Ronald. And with that said, let's go ahead and switch over to the computer. And now that I'm in the computer, I'm actually uh, in Lightroom. This Lightroom is, of course, where I keep and manage all my photos. And I even have a collection for my um, compositing, for basically images that I use, backgrounds I've used before, uh, composites I've done before. Uh, matter of fact, uh, this was always a fun one. I, I did this uh, live on Twitch a few months back. But this, of course, is Rufus, my manager, and uh, this was this was like literally in five minutes. So I could even see some stuff around the neck I need to clean up. But that's Rufus's head on someone else's body on a different background, of course, with the text Skyfall. And uh, here's another one uh, back in the day when I did a Laura, Co Laura Croft um, theme. And uh, that model was basically just standing in my studio on a plain background and putting her... Uh, on that cave background made it look a lot more realistic. So that's the kind of compositing we're talking about. And so today's subjects are going to be Tony and uh, Alina. Uh, Tony and Alina actually came in for a shoot last weekend. And uh, Tony, a uh, very debonair, debonair looking guy there in his uh, tuxedo jacket. And of course, Alina um, in her um, blouse and skirt. So we're going to composite them. And I thought, especially with Tony, he looks like he would either be standing in front of a casino or stand you know, in a casino, not in front, uh, or a nightclub or some cool evening place. I mean, that's after all, that's when you wear a tux, you wear it in the evening. Uh, so we need to put them kind of in an evening background. Uh, so I was thinking casinos, and then I did a quick couple searches, and since casinos don't really let you photograph them, there's not a lot of imagery of the casino itself. There's gambling tables and things like that, but casino didn't work out. So I thought, ah, nightclub. I'm sure there's plenty of images of nightclubs I can use. So let's go find the right background with these images in mind first, and then we'll come back and grab these images and put them on. So I'm going to head over to uh, Adobe Photoshop CC. And in Photoshop CC, uh, you can get to stock or Adobe stock from a few different places. You can get to it from the website. You can get to it from your Creative Cloud app even. So like, if you go to Creative Cloud and you go to stock, there's a stock panel. You can do a search right there, which that will, by the way, take you to the website. But my favorite way to do it is actually in the Creative Cloud libraries because not only does that let me search for stock, but it lets me grab the images I want as previews or to go ahead and license them and use them um, um, from that point on if it, if it works out. So uh, let's go ahead and do nightclub. Now this is a live search of Adobe stock right here on the fly. And of course, um, that's a great scene, but that wouldn't work out because there are already people in it and it, you know we could maybe work him in between, but it just wouldn't be the right one. Then you got some uh, wine glasses on the bar there or champagne, whatever that is. You have the lower uh, two-thirds of a dance floor. Uh, that really wouldn't work out. This one is one that I experimented with earlier. I'll probably use that one, but let me just keep going down and seeing if I find anything I like a little bit better. The DJ booth from behind. Uh, that one could kind of work out, maybe. Uh, the 
Uh, blurred out background with unrecognizable faces. That would be kind of cool to have them just standing there in the middle of an empty nightclub. But then again, I think it would be better if we have some people around. So I'm going to go back up. I don't really see one that I like better than the one that I already looked at. Let's see if I'm going to keep going here. That's kind of cool. And if you're just kind of curating like a background for your, for your band or for a nice um, music image with the spotlights, that's a nice one. Yeah, I'm going to go back up. Okay, there was one that was like right near the top that I really liked, and it was this one. Now, you have the option of downloading that as a preview or licensing it right here on the spot. And maybe I don't know if I want it or not. So I, I don't know if that's going to work out perfectly. So I don't want to pay for it just yet. So, of course, if you click to download it as a preview, which I had already done, it downloads it as a preview, and then you can uh, begin to work with that image. So I'm just going to go ahead and double-click on it. And that will bring that image in. Now, here's the thing you have to look out for. Because that's a low res preview, um, when I double click on it, it opens it up low res. So let me go ahead and look at my uh, image size here and I expect that to be pretty small. Yeah, it's a relatively small image. It's like a two megapixel image. Um, so I can either A, um, increase the size of it now or B, make a canvas for it that's bigger and drag it on and size it, or C, um, use the image resolution from the photos I'm gonna use and then put it on there. So there's lots of options for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this one, make this one a little bit bigger. Uh, let's go ahead and make it, uh, make the width, oh, I'm just gonna like triple it, 3000. All right, so keep it in mind, that's okay because we're not really, um, we're not really uh, you know, going to use that low res image anyway. We're going to replace it with the original if we like it. Okay, so now I've got the kind of nightclub scene going on. Don't worry about the Adobe stock logo because that's what happens on the preview or the file number, which by the way, if you wanted to try this yourselves, that's the file number you'd search for. And now let's go get our image of Tony that we want to bring in. So let's go ahead and bring, um, go back to Lightroom. And I don't know which one I want to use. Um... I was kind of standing there officially. That one looks a little meaner. I think I'll go with the official stance in front of the dancers there. All right, so let's go with that one. Let's, uh, uh, I can uh, command E and from uh, Lightroom, that will automatically open up this raw file into Photoshop in its own window. And one of the things that's fairly new that I discovered in Photoshop, one of the like little um, JDIs, just do it or hidden gems, uh, before, if I wanted to take this image over to the other one, I would use the Move tool, grab it, pick it up, bring it over to the tab of the other one, drag it into the other one, and let go. And that would work. See, it's still very, very small compared to Tony. But let me show you another way that I just did by accident uh, the other day, and it worked fine. Um, now you can actually drag the actual layer over to the tab of the other one and just let go. And that will bring it over. So you can do it either way. Now, of course, this one's meaning that this one's much bigger resolution than the other one. That's why it's so big. So I'm going to go ahead and size them down for now. Uh, so I hit Command T, Control T on Windows. And we'll just go ahead and scale him down to fit that frame. And of course, uh, that's part of the illusion of making, sh making someone into a background they weren't originally on, you gotta make the size realistic too. So it'd probably be something like that. I mean, he's standing closer to the camera, obviously he'd be a little bit bigger, but he wouldn't be a giant in that room compared to everybody else. So for example, that would probably be about the size of everyone else. So we can probably stand to make him just a little bit bigger than that. All right, now since I didn't, in this particular shot, I don't have his legs and feet, um, you got to kind of put them at the bottom because you don't want them floating in midair. Uh, so with that, we've got to, uh, oh, we'll just go ahead and lock that one in. So, okay, we'll enter that one that resized it. And of course, that's on a separate layer. We can move it around, put them anywhere we want. And again, we'll just put them right here for now. Put them off to the side a little bit. Okay, so we're done, right? No, because that was the whole point. We want to not only put them on a different background, but make them look like he was actually on that background originally like he was part of that photo. Now, a couple things go into that. Obviously, one, the big elephant in the room here is removing the existing background. Number two, though, 
Also gets into the lighting because he's he was taking on a nice white background and that club is dimly lit with spotlights and all kinds of stuff going on around in it. So those are a couple things that you're going to want to do um, to make it look a little bit more realistic. So looking at the comments here, don't forget to hold down the shift key when resizing. Absolutely. Uh, and hello, Pakistan. And uh, sidewalk in front of a restaurant. Yeah, he could be a, he could be a waiter uh, with a tux on like that. And okay, hey, Bake Like a Pro, how's it going? All right, so with that said, uh, now how do we cut him out from the background? So the first thing is we want him on his own layer, and he is on his own layer. And we'll go ahead and just uh, rename that layer Tony. And now that we have our Tony layer, I'm going to go ahead and increase the view size of this a little bit. So we just move that up. There we go. And uh, we'll just go to the select, and there is a select and mask option. So select and mask officially kind of replaced what used to be refine edge. And I know a lot of people were getting used to and jazzed about refine edge, and they were like, well, wait, where, what happened? I, I know how to use refine edge. I don't know how, to, know how to use the select and mask. Well, first and foremost, refine edge is actually still there. If you make a selection first, then you can hold down your shift key, or is it option? Hold on, I think it's option. Hold down your option or alt key and choose uh, select and mask, and that will not do it. Okay, so it's not shift key. Hang on. Cancel. Or it's not option key, I should say. I think it is shift. Select, select and mask. Yes, that will bring up refine edge. So refine edge is still there if you hold down your shift key when you make a selection and choose select and mask. It doesn't change it to say refine edge until you actually get into it. So it is it will still say select and mask in the menu. All right, but, so if you are like hooked on select and mask, you can still get back to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and, or I'm sorry, refine edge, you can get back to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, select and mask without holding down the shift key. And you're like, well, what happened? Why did you disappear? Well, this will always be left on, your transparency setting will always be left on what you left it on last. So for example, if I bring this back down to a comfortable number to where we can see him, zero of course will make him 100% opaque. I know it sounds like the opposite. And 100% will make basically what your new selection is uh, visible. So since we haven't made a selection yet, that's why he looks like he's completely gone. So I'm gonna bring it down to where I can see at this point, most of him. And now I'm gonna use the uh, quick mask tool. And that's another uh, thing, a reason why I like selected masks better is because quick mask is built in. I don't have to make a selection first. I have my selection methods right there. So I can go ahead and just start uh, anywhere on the image, just click and drag my way around and it is making a selection. Now, in some cases, like this is, he's wearing a white jacket on a white background, so it's a little tricky uh, because it started selecting that background too. So I'd have to hold down my option key or alt key and tell it to, no, I don't want the background, just him. Now, um, let's get rid of that edge too. All right, so in cases like this where, okay, it's starting to look like we're cutting him out. Let me make sure I get his legs down there. Um, but you know, it's getting a little rough around the edges on the jacket. So you can either, um, try to bring that back in with the edge of the quick select tool, or there's been a brush that's been introduced that makes that, that a lot easier. So with a brush, you can go in, let's go ahead and make the brush a little smaller there. And I can, um, more directly bring in that edge or more precisely i should say bring that edge back in right with a brush so that way i'm not constantly fighting between uh the quick select you know option to subtract and plus to add i can just go ahead and paint in any areas where it started to get a little too close to the edge okay so far so good now the next thing is a couple things so up here where Tony's hair is getting a little soft and blending into the background, I see a white edge around it. So I could use the refine mask tool or refine brush tool, I should say, to 
kind of go in and re refine or redefine that edge and it'll recalculate it. That does a nice job. Same thing here on the pants. Um, or I could, uh, or actually I wouldn't say or, I would say in addition to that, I would also turn on Smart Radius because Smart Radius usually does a pretty good job of defining what should be a hard edge and what should be a soft edge. So that kind of fine tunes it a little bit. Also with the brush down there, I noticed I got a little carried away there. Hang on, my option key is freaking out. There we go. All right, we'll clean that up a little bit. And of course, um, zooming in always helps. And that lets you see what you're getting and what you're missing. Right, let me look at the comments real quick to make sure I didn't miss this. Is it possible for you to rec record or review your job? Um, I don't know what you mean by record or review my job. What does that mean? Uh, white edge on his leg too. Yep, I saw the white edge on his leg. And hello, Austria. All right. Make sure I'm back in the right tool, the brush. And again, just cleaning up those edges just a little bit around the jacket to blend that in. So technically what you would do is you would go in and just make sure that you've gotten, you're not missing any big pieces around the, all the way around the image and you don't have too much of the background left over. Now where I have this white edge, I could just go in with the brush and kind of clean that edge up a little bit as I was doing a minute ago like so to kind of clean that up now he's got black pants on and that background down there is black so the only thing really standing out is the white edge um, or one of my favorite ways of doing this globally is to simply use the shift edge command right here in the panel so there's a shift edge slider that you can move left or right you can move it all the way over or all the way to the left usually that's too much or too little um, you can go ahead and just shift it over a little bit and that means con all the way around contract the edge in just a little bit all the way around all right so now that we've got that um, he's looking pretty good and if I have the opacity all the way or transparency all the way set at 100 so that was before and now that's after and, you're, and some of you might say you're cheating that was easy white background yeah I know because I shoot things to make them easier to cut out what you get what you put in is what you're going to get so if you put in this really complex complicated background behind them especially if it's the same color as what they're wearing it's not going to do as good of a job it's not going to be as easy to do it's going to take you more time so uh, when i'm shooting or photographing someone i'm making sure that uh, if i ever intend on putting them on something different i'm going to take at least a couple shots where they're on a plain background to make it that much easier all right, so shift edge. Now, inevitably, you could still miss something and, and not see it till later on. So one of the things you want to do is, um, someone said just moved him, move him left. Oh, yeah, I could move him left to where the background is not so dark down there and we would be able to see more of him. But I'll do that in a second. All right, um, but one of the things that inevitably will happen is you'll see something later that you missed while you were in this dialog box. It's like, oh, shoot. I didn't get that little piece that was left over on his cheek or whatever, or under the arm or between the legs, whatever. So what you can do is um, when you output this, you want to always output it to a new layer with a mask. That's one of the options. Don't just output a selection. Don't just output a new layer. Output a new layer with mask. Because what that will do, once I click OK, look at what it did in the layers. It gave me a Tony copy layer. And that Tony copy layer, it turned off the original layer with the background, turned on the new layer, and gave me a mask. So even if I miss something and want to get it later, I have the mask to go back and edit with the regular paintbrush. Now, I can pick Tony up and move him over and see uh, his pants. Yeah, see, it's kind of, I'd have to lighten up that background. It's still kind of dark down there, but there's his pants. We can see them there. And uh, I can move him over and put him anywhere I want. I can also see at the top of his head, because of the lighting, I did miss something. So now is the perfect opportunity for the mask. So if I go into the mask, go to my brush, um, make my brush a little bigger there. And I just want to go in 
and mask out that little bit above his head like so that I didn't see. So that's what I mean by um, you're going to see something usually later that you didn't see the first time. So, okay. So now we got Tony cut out. Let's go ahead and bring in his companion. Let's go back to Lightroom. Let's go to Alina. And uh, here's one of the other things too. When I was looking at for photographs, a lot of time, or if I'm going to cut it out and put it on a different background, one of the other things I'm looking for is to make sure there's, there's no limb, like an arm or a hand or a leg that's touching the edge of the frame or cut off by the edge of the frame. Because then if you're going to take them and put them on a different background, you've got to make sure you put them up against the edge because otherwise half their arm's missing unless you're going to, you know, Photoshop a copy of it in. So um, that's another thing to look out for. Now, speaking of compositing, we're putting together a live stream next week that's going to be three days long. And it's all about compositing. It's compositing like I'm doing now. It's compositing in 3D. It's some of the world's best compositors coming for a 3D or three day, not 3D, some 3D, but three day live stream event next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And let me play a quick clip to tell you more about that and show you kind of who's going to be there to see it. All right, if I can get my mouse there. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'll be co-hosting that event next week with Michael Chase, who I just saw pop up in the chat here, and that'll be at adobelive.com next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, back to our story here. So we've got Alina ready to go, and we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. Command E um, from Photoshop or from Lightroom that will put her uh, in Photoshop in a second or two. I see Photoshop popping back up to the front, and here she comes. And once again, I can just go ahead and drag uh, her entire layer over to the uh, layer that we were on. So let's go ahead and Command T, zoom out. We need to size her down as well because the resolution of this one was much higher than that preview I got from stock. All right, so now we'll get her. And the same thing, we need to make her make sure she's the right size, not only in comparison to the scene, but also in comparison to Tony. Uh, so she's a little bit shorter than Tony, obviously, and but we don't make her want to make her look too tiny. So I would say that's about the right size. Now I can move her closer in once we get rid of that background, or it doesn't actually. I don't even have to wait, but let's put her there. All right, so let's go ahead and lock that in now. The next thing we're going to do is repeat, rinse and repeat. So we're going to make this the Alina layer, and we're going to go ahead, go back to um, select, select and mask. And same thing, oh, she disappeared because you got to remember your slider's all the way over on 100. So you haven't made a selection yet. And now we're going to go ahead and make that selection. Now, this one's going to be a little tougher because she's got that problem that a lot of people have. And that problem is she's got hair. <laughs> so because she has hair, that's going to make it a little bit. Oh, hang on. Sorry, it popped over to. Or quit Photoshop by mistake. Or Photoshop quit on me by mistake. Sorry about that, folks. Let's see how good the recovery is going to be. No. Don't tell me I lost it. No. Oh, my God. That is horrible. I lost it. It didn't recover. All right, so lesson learned, always save, save your work. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we already saw Tony cut out, so we're just going to go ahead and cut Alina out. All right, so next, uh, let's go ahead and bring her back in. So Command E, we'll bring her in, same thing. And we will, oh, no, no. Pull her back in. 
Command T, Control T on Windows, scale her down. All right, that's what I get for not saving my work as I go. All right, so we'll lock her down and we will change the layer and we will bring that close. Okay, we'll go back to selected mask. Same thing, bring the slider down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And we use quick select to start selecting her. So you can leave the transparency in the middle to try and help to kind of help you um, see what you've got selected versus what you don't yet have selected. All right. And then once you think you've got it all selected, if you take the transparency all the way down, then you'll see what you missed or what you shouldn't have selected, like this part under the arm. So we'll just option or alt click on those to kind of clean those out. Oh, too, too big of a brush there. Let's zoom in and make the brush a little smaller. Now, when it starts getting into individual strands of hair like that, I'm not going to, I could, you know, start subtracting out the um, white like I was doing with the brush, but it's just much easier to use the refine brush tool. So we'll grab our refine brush, we'll make that smaller, and we'll hold down our option or alt key. Or no, actually, we don't need to hold down the option or alt key, we're just going to go ahead and click. And we're just going to come right through here. Um, and since I clicked on the white background, it knows to use that color to subtract. So I was able to go right through her fingers and it was okay because it was a, it knows what color is what. All right, so we still have some more cleanup to do. So first and foremost, like I said, I usually turn on Smart Radius, bump it up a little bit to kind of clean up around the edges. Um, in the case where I see right on the edge of her finger there, the selection was a little bit too liberal in the first place. So we're just going to go ahead and put some of that back with the brush tool. And where's my stylus here? Just bring that finger back in and bring that thumb back in. I can kind of see where they were starting to go transparent right on the edges there. All right, everything else looks good around the edge there. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit more. And like I said, where I can see a thin white line around her skirt, <clears throat> I could either go around that with a brush and clean it up that way, or just simply use the shift edge to kind of bring that down. Now it takes a second or two to calculate that. Actually, I'm going the wrong way with it. I should be going that way with it. There we go. Um, shift edge, meaning left, bring it in right bring it out so actually i want to go left with it all right so that did a really good job on the shift uh, shift edge i can also bring the transparency all the way down to kind of see what it really looks like and that's what it would really look like cut out right now so if i'm happy with that again i may have missed something so always save it with a new layer and mask so let's go ahead and do that now the next thing is that even though we have that new layer and mask and we have the old one if we ever want the old one back it's still there the next thing is, and this is what I talked about earlier, even if you make a perfect cutout, no matter what method you use, taking a scene that was lit one way and putting it on a scene that was lit a totally different way is, you know, you're going to be able to notice it. In other words, you're going to say, wait a minute, that she's, a, you know, the lighting's a little bit different on her. Why has everyone else kind of got this red glow around them? If she was standing on those red lights, she'd have the same red glow. And I see spotlights going across other people that I don't see on her. So there's a couple ways around that. There's a couple ways to do that. You can either A, replicate some of that lighting and put it right on top of her, or B, use a color lookup to put over the whole scene to kind of light relight the whole scene the way you want it's it really is up to you which one looks the way you want it to look okay so next thing we're going to do is let's try let's let's try both uh now since we have this nice mask i'm going to go ahead and hold down my option or alt key you know what 
why don't we save it while we're here? <laughs> That's a good spot to save. All right, let's just do a test. All right, so we saved it, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, uh, we're going to take that mask that we have. We're going to hold down the Option or Alt key, and uh, actually, now we don't need to hold down the Option or Alt key. We're going to hold down our Command key. Command key, that or Command key or Control key on Windows, that will make a selection from that mask. Now, we don't really want to select her. We've already got her cut out. What I want to use is her silhouette, her selection, on the original background. So I'm going to switch to the original background layer with that selection in place, the marching ants, and do a or copy to a new layer of just that part. So Command J. So that will put just that on a layer all by itself. So that's the lighting we want. That's what it would look like. Um, but we want that, on, of course, on top of her. Now, if we put that directly on top of her, then it just covers her up. So what we want to do is put that on top of her, but use a blending mode to bring it back in. So you can try different blending modes to see which one you like best. I usually start with color, the color blending mode. Um, and of course, you can lower the opacity to, to kind of do it to taste or even mask it to kind of paint it in where you want it and unpaint it where you don't want it. So at 100%, that's probably too much because it's really taken away from the colors of everything on her. I would say maybe bring it down to about about there. Now, there are some things I don't like, like for example, these red streaks uh, throughout her clothes. So like I said, just simply add a mask to that layer. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask. And um, grab a paintbrush, bigger brush. And that way you'll be able to see as we go ahead and kind of paint that out. Now, if you paint it out too much, you're going to be able to see it all. So let's go ahead and just paint out a little bit of that. Yeah, right about there. Okay, good. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so that's option number one. Option number two, I'm going to turn off option number one so we can see option number two and see which one we like better. Option number two is to use a color lookup table. So if we go to our color lookup, we can add a lookup file. And of course, there isn't one that says studio lights or, you know, nightclub. So you have to pick one that is kind of, kind of be neutral. And believe it or not, edgy amber sounds like it might be it, but we're going to try fall color look. And the fall color look kind of, since it's applying to everything, kind of makes everything the same tone. And again, you have the same way of turning that down a bit if you don't like it. So we can turn that down a little bit for the lookup table, as well as apply some blending modes on Alina herself. So for example, we can maybe multiply that. That's a little too much. Let's duplicate that layer first. Duplicate. And now let's try multiply. Or not multiply, what am I saying? Multiply, yeah, multiply will do it. Maybe reduce the opacity of that multiply just a little bit more. And with the color lookup table, so that's without it, that's with it. I kind of like it with it because it's making everything kind of even out the same color. And I like that versus that because that's a little, oh, wait a minute, now it's not. So many choices. So little time. I don't know. I can't decide now which one I like better. I think I like that one better overall. But that one's kind of cool too. So it really just depends on how you want to blend your subject into that existing background. Another dead giveaway with the lighting is if you notice everyone in the background. Um, and again, they're not in the foreground. So I expect them to be darker. But as the light, as, as the... Illumination goes down the person it gets really dark at the bottom So she's you know, you can see her skirt. She's pretty evenly lit um, And that that's another dead giveaway So the other one of the last things we could do is we could add a mask that would simply mask uh, Her 
down from the lighting perspective. So let's try that. All right, uh, what I wanna do is we wanna try that on a layer. Here, let's turn this off for a second. And let's get a layer of just her. And now turn that back on. Okay, so now I have this layer of just her. And what I wanna do is I wanna add a mask to that layer. And using a gradient tool, we're gonna go ahead and apply black to white gradient from the bottom up. And we need to turn these other ones off. Hang on for a minute. The other way. There we go. Not that much, not that much. Actually, that looks like it's going, we want black to transparent, not black to white. I think that's gonna be black to transparent, maybe. Let's try that one instead. Yeah, I don't want her to come, I don't want her to disappear from the bottom. I just wanted to get darker. All right, tell you what we'll do. We'll get that just about the tone I want it. Let's do it with this one. All right, then we turn the other one back on. All right, let's see if we can get that darker yet. And lower the opacity of the one below. That one. Just kind of want to darken that just a bit going down. So just making that a little darker all the way around. All right, so again, cutting the person out, putting them on a stock background and making that stock background or making it look like they're really there is all part of the game. So making sure you not only do a great cutout, but also do some things to affect the image tone so it looks like it's blending in with the lighting that was already there. All right, um, let's see here. It looks good, sweet. Show both. Yeah, okay, so now the person said, hey, you know, bad resolution, don't scale the background up. So in this case, I didn't, this one I didn't scale the background up, I just opened it, I believe. So let's go ahead and deal with that now. Now, because I saved this one out, I don't believe it's gonna be linked anymore to the original, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's say this is the background we wanna use. So now I can say license this image and if I had just opened it like I had originally, then it would, once I license it, it would replace it. But because I did the save as, this may not replace it. So let's check it. All right, it didn't. So what we're gonna do, go to that background and just gonna go ahead and drag this one in. Or actually, we don't have to drag this one in. What am I thinking? Because that one's gonna just make it the same lower res. Let's open it up. And now we can go ahead and that's the full resolution of it. So if we zoom in, we don't have any artifacts, we don't have any bad resolution, and we can go ahead and take her from that original, there she is, and we can take these layers and duplicate them onto our uh, new stock background. So we'll duplicate layers onto the Dancing People JPEG, and She's gonna be smaller because we scaled her down, so now we can scale her back up. And put her back in. All right, so last but not least, I would probably still clean up that edge just a little bit on the, on the left and right of her skirt, but I think that's gonna be it. All right, so, sorry for the unexpected quit right there in the middle of Photoshop, but those things do happen. Just save as you go along, you should be okay. And I uh, hope you enjoyed basically transferring someone from one background to another using selected mask. Again, you still have Refine Edge if that's what you're really hooked on. You can still get to it by making a selection first and then holding down the shift key and choosing selected mask. But otherwise, 
you can just start using Select and Mask from here on out. Um, now that that is cut out, you could use different backgrounds along the way. So for example, one of the other things you can do is drag from a library right to your um, background um, or right to your layers panel and swap out backgrounds as needed once that person is cut out. The only th other thing then, you would still need to change the lighting to make sure it matches, but choosing different backgrounds from stock images uh, makes it a lot more fun when you're doing things like this, when you're doing compositing. Because then you can start putting people in all kinds of places um, because they're cut out nicely. All right, so with that said, thanks for watching. And we will catch you next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at adobelive.com for three days of compositing. I'll be co-hosting. We'll be bringing all kinds of experts in to show you how they do their compositing, how they work with 3D. Uh, we'll see some Project Felix along the way as well. And cheers, everybody. Have a great weekend.